Hi, I'm Jason. We've been focusing on desert practices over the past few weeks, and this morning, I'd love to talk about prayer, or at least one aspect of prayer. Last week was a bit of an emphasis on listening prayer, centering prayer, contemplative prayer, the spiritual practice and desert practice of being alone, having silence, having solitude, and prayer isn't always about saying something and doing something and appealing for God to do something. But this week, I want to lean into the, what we normally think of with prayer, at least in Western culture, sometimes called intercessory prayer or intercession. The, the, these are the kinds of prayers that you, when you pray for someone. But I don't want this morning to get into the... I don't want it in any way to seem like there's some kind of formula. If you pray this way, this happens. I don't know. I've never really resonated with that. And I've never really, I feel like anyone who presents, like all you have to do is this and then this happens. I tend to not trust people who talk that way. But there's, there's something about intercessory prayer. There, 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 there's something that I've experienced that I think is real in that. And then of course in, uh, there are all sorts of biblical examples, one of which is Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So there it is. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So there's something specific about presenting our requests to God. Prayer is not just silence. Prayer is not just listening. Prayer is not just meditating. Prayer is also petitioning or, or, or requesting to God. But I, I really think it's important to continue in this passage, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. So I just read 6. Here's 7. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. There's a lot there I just want to briefly mention, though, instead of going through all of all the implications of what that could mean, I just want to briefly mention that it doesn't directly say, nor do I think that there's a theme throughout Scripture that addresses something like through prayer, petition, request, things will always happen the way that you are requesting. Now, there are some passages that talk about asking God and God giving, some of which actually uh, there's an emphasis on asking for the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and the, the, the teaching is, well, of course you'd get the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't, God wouldn't refuse that from you if you were to ask but I think sometimes I get caught up a little bit in, or I get dragged down a little bit by the sentiments that you have to pray a certain way with a certain kind of formula. And if you do, you will get what you asked for. But on the other side of that same coin is there can become there there can be a bit of a pessimistic approach where you say, well, you know, if God doesn't, God's going to do whatever God's going to do, or things are just going to happen anyway. Why should I bother praying? Why should I bother requesting? I think there's a little bit of a hint here. In verse seven, why should you bother asking? Well. I don't know all that goes on in that interaction. I'm not God, and uh, I don't know what God does with my prayers. I don't know if God answers. I don't know how God answers. I don't know how all that works. But I, there's something special about doing it. And here are two things that I want to suggest this morning that are very special about doing it. They're just two things. It's not exhaustive. It's not going to answer all of your questions. I can't answer all of your questions. I don't know how prayer works. I don't know all that God does with our prayers. I don't know why some seem to be answered and some don't. Uh, 20 years ago, I thought I knew. And now I know that I don't know. But I have experienced this. I've experienced verse 7. 
right, that through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present these requests to God. And what is one of the results? What is one of the whys? Why would that? What's the point? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There have been times that I have prayed for someone to be healed. Someone's in the hospital. They're going through surgery. And just pray that, you know, God, would you be with so-and-so? Would you bring healing to them? And then they're not healed and they die. And instead of thinking that I did something wrong and it was all up to me and I somehow love this person more than God and God should have healed them and I wanted them to be healed. But what, what I've experienced is my heart being guarded, my, my mind being filled with the mind of Christ. There's some sort of peace that I feel and I want to go further and say, I think one of the purposes of intercessory prayer, prayer is that you draw closer to the people you're praying for. So those are the things that I've experienced. I don't know, I don't know how God handles these prayer requests. I don't know why sometimes it, it works and, I, and others it doesn't. And I, I would caution you if, some, if someone around you says that they know how it all works. Be very careful with that. But through experience and through, I think, a biblical example here, I think that it's actually safe and accurate to say and to teach that prayer and petition, presenting requests to God with thanksgiving, creates a sense of peace in our hearts, guards our hearts, guards our minds in Christ, and draws us closer to the to the people that we're praying for. If, if you, I mentioned this last week, but one of, the, one of the teachings of the ancient rabbis when they were asked, what's the purpose of prayer? And you know, if you get a bunch of rabbis in a room, you're gonna get a whole lot of answers. They say more answers than rabbis. And one of the teachings of the ancient rabbis about the purpose of prayer was to get to know what's in your own heart. So intercessory prayer, whatever you're praying for, whatever you're thinking about, whatever ends up coming out of your mouth was in your heart. So it's now being revealed. So it's maybe not just about praying it all the right way so that God does something, that it has to be all biblically accurate with all the formula. Maybe it's just a revealing of what's going on in here. And so when you pray, when you have petition, when you express thanksgiving, when you present requests to God, whether it's uh, whether it's informal and casual as it comes to mind, or if you have a journal and you pray and you write down all these prayer requests, these are things that are being revealed that are inside of you. And so let's say your grandmother's sick and she's in the hospital and she has cancer. When you pray for your grandmother, it actually does matter. There's something there that God might do and might not do. And that stuff matters. People's lives matter. Their health matters. But there's also something else going on there. And that is there's a sense of, of peace, of your, your heart and mind being guarded. And you are paying attention to that thing in you that so dearly loves your grandmother. And that is important. And so one of the purposes of intercessory prayer is to be able to pay attention to the things that you find important. And I'll go further with it. I think that there's a way that maybe it can kind of go the other direction too. Uh, Maybe it's a little bit demonstrated. There's a little hint there in the sentiment of praying for our enemies praying for those who persecute, loving our enemies, praying for those who persecute us? What if you don't feel actually particularly close to someone? Maybe if you pray for them. Maybe if you pray for them, you'll start to feel closer to them. So I'd encourage you, if you you don't pray much, if you don't have prayers of petition or requests, If you you don't have regular rhythms where you 
ask God for things? <laughs> Maybe commit to a season of doing that to see what's in your heart. Find out what's in your heart. And actually, you might find out there's some kind of selfish sentiments. There might be seasons where if you, you, you let whatever's in your heart come out and you might just say, Dear God, give me these things. I want more things and I want more stuff. And give me this thing that I saw at the store the other day. And you might, it's just coming out and you find out that it's there. And when you find out it's, that it's there, you can acknowledge that it's there. And you, wow, that's there. That's in, that was in my heart. That's my desire. And over time, you can learn that there's other stuff in your heart. There's a deeper well. There's a deeper source in you that wants more real things than that. Sometimes when you dig, when you, when you go down into a well to get water, sometimes you don't get the deepest, best water right away. And so... Maybe just get all that stuff out of your system and I want a new car and I want a new house and I want a new, I want to raise and I get it out. Just go ahead and get it out. It's in there. Get, get it out. Keep digging into the well. Keep going it deeper and deeper into that source because the kingdom is in your midst. There's more there and maybe it's not just about saying it right, doing it right. Maybe it's about discerning what is in your heart and also maybe training your heart. So maybe there's some people that uh, you don't particularly like or you don't get along with. Maybe there's a work associate, a family member, a roommate, and doesn't always go well. Maybe you could commit to actively and regularly praying for them and see what happens. See if your heart starts to draw closer to them. So it's time for another challenge. It's been, it's been quite a while, except a couple of weeks ago, I wanted to challenge us. And here's another one. I love how Things just kind of circle back around to old school ways, but maybe would you consider making a list of things and or people to pray for? In part, because you would literally be asking God to do these things, but also for you to be able to discern and, and expect and respond to the peace of God that you might feel. The feeling of maybe your, your heart and your mind being guarded somehow in Christ and also how you are drawing closer to those people or those experiences. Maybe there's some world events going on that are particularly dear to you that you feel strongly about. Maybe it's related to natural disasters and you know injuries and deaths and the people that have been affected by those or maybe it's related to racial injustice conversations and you want to be praying for certain people certain people groups and maybe there's the kind of people that you normally gravitate towards that you normally have affinity to that you would be praying for them think also about the, the people that you don't you normally don't Maybe be thinking about the people that you might go so far as to say are your enemies. Would you commit to praying for them? And so challenge, it's mid-September. Would you spend the rest of September, next couple weeks, actively, regularly praying for people and circumstances? And don't just try to find out if the prayers were, quote, answered, but also be discerning and thinking through the feeling of peace and your heart and mind being guarded and also be, begin to be more in touch with the part of you that is drawing closer to people. 
because in the midst of us talking about desert practices and within the context of COVID-19 and us not being as close together as we would prefer, well, maybe there's some people that you haven't seen in a while. Maybe there's people that you actually are kind of close with them and you like them and you're friends with them, but you actually haven't bumped into them in six months. Write their name down and remember to be praying for them. And then over the next couple of weeks, see if as you pray for them, you feel yourself being drawn closer to them. And when you do that, may you realize that you are not as alone as you thought. And so, my sisters and my brothers, may you believe that God listens to your prayers. But may you also believe that you can listen to your prayers and learn something about yourself. And may you believe that God is in the midst of all of your prayers and all of your thoughts. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and be gracious to you and turn his face towards you and shine his light on you and grant you with peace. Amen.